This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It's written that in a place that you don't have someone else to do the job for you. So you should be that one to do your job. If you see that there's no one else to replace you, to do something that is important, that is needed, so you must take the responsibility and be that man, to be that woman, that person, that will go and do the job, no matter what the job is. A good soldier is not only the soldier in the highest level that uh, that uh, been praised and uh, on 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 like by the commanders received all the the glory and the a good soldier is a soldier that always doing what that his commander is telling him to do. I gave that that example many times. If your commander tells you now you need to go and scrub the toilets, a good soldier doesn't think twice. No, but my clean uniforms, but my honor, my respect. No, a good soldier doesn't think twice. My commander told me now to go, that's it, scrubbing, and he's scrubbing with joy. He's happy to do that. Now, what's the problem? When we are losing that connection to really to serve the Creator with a happy heart and a wishing soul, why, why so many times we're falling to sadness and, and, and getting so frustrated because first of all many times it happens to us that we don't understand who is our commander. Many times, like in the army, like in, in, in a job, someone else can come to you and start bossing you around and telling you what to do and you look at him and you say, hey, he's not my boss and he's still bossing me around. So something here is, is evil, something here is nasty. And we can find ourselves in that situation many, many times while serving, while trying to serve Hashem. That we feel that we are being commanded by people and not by the Creator. Sometimes it can be rabbis that we're not sure that they are really saying to us God's will. And sometimes it's even not, not, not even rabbis, it's just like people that are, are telling us what, they, what we should do by their opinion. Like a husband, like a wife, like a, like a neighbor, like a, some speaker in the, in the synagogue or whatever, a parent that can start telling us, you should do this, you should do this. And then, no, not supposed to, at least don't feel like I should. This is one reason. Second reason is that you feel that you don't have a real connection with the Creator Himself. Now, you start questioning and doubting the fact that there is a Creator. In the end of the day, I am serving, I am keeping, I am doing, I'm coming, I'm waking up in the mornings, I'm praying, I'm dressing up, I'm, I'm, I'm trying at least, I'm fulfilling my obligation, I was fasting until 9, 10 yesterday, whatever, and, and where are the salvations, where are the miracles, where are the wonders, where is that inspiring feeling that, uh, that, uh, that we hoped for, where are those wonders, those prayers that are being answered, and the wealth and prosperity because of my still money giving the donations, and, and, and tzedakah, charity, and where, where is the reward that is waiting for those ones who will serve? And you start doubting the existence of Hashem. So from both of those reasons, or that there are people that are pushing themselves and blocking the light of Hashem from us, or that the light of Hashem is disappearing from us because we don't clearly see who He is and cannot understand Him completely, from one of those reasons we're finding ourselves that we're losing the passion and the desire to do whatever He will tell us to do, to be 100% committed. In the Zohar Kadosh, in the book that's been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his holy friends, it says that if we would know how much the Creator, He loves us, 
we would chase after him like lions. And on lions, it's been said in a different place that lions doesn't know what fear is at all. They like, they're not afraid. They are like animals, wild animals, doesn't think. The king of the, of the savannah, the king of the forest, he's running, he's the boss and he's doing his job and he doesn't doubt his position, he never questions his, 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 his work, he knows exactly what he needs to do and he's doing it. And no one will interfere, no one will, will, will hold him back, he doesn't see that as an, as an option at all. So that's a lion. So as those lions, we supposed to go after Hashem and never to back off, never to surrender, never to fall. But why aren't we doing that? Because we still don't understand how much He loves us. Now, for everyone, the most natural thing to do is to blame ourselves. That's the easiest, most natural thing. Automatically it happens to all of us. Okay, so I don't love Hashem enough. If we would stop the class right now, everyone are going to hate themselves in their own houses. I don't understand how much Hashem loves me, and it's because of me, and I didn't look enough, and I was not searching enough, and Hashem maybe doesn't, really, maybe doesn't love me. I misinterpret the intention completely of what the verses are all about, of what those amazing Midrashim are all about. The Creator is coming to us and waking us up again and again. And don't think that I'm a hypocrite now that is telling you that Hashem is great and everything is perfect. I have many problems with Hashem. And we're going to discuss a few of them also tonight. It's not a problem. It's allowed. It's okay to talk about things. If you're not talking about things, things are getting rotten and stinky. And, and, and you become rusty and you lose your mind. And things are start cooking inside of you in bad ways and you start losing your direction because you're not dealing with your reality with your pain with your issues with your problems we must handpick those issues and fix them and investigate them and take care of them and not to ignore them the issues that we're going through in our spirits in our emotional um, body we must not ignore our feelings. We must investigate and check where we're holding because we want to fix it all, because we want to complete it all, and we want to reach the highest levels of them all. Now, while we understand that the Creator, He loves us, an unconditional love, an enormous love, a wonderful love, and we cannot feel it, we cannot sense it, we're finding ourselves stuck in small houses, with huge debts, in, 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 in hard hours, in, in difficulties that we cannot find no solution, no answer to our problems. And we're going to consult with rabbis, with righteous people, if we have the ability to meet one in a million or whatever, and trying to do tshuva, and trying to accept on ourselves the yoke of heaven, and to keep to our mitzvot, and more and more. And finding ourselves like that are like different generations all like 2000 years ago said praying and not being answered this is something that started in days of destruction when the temple been destroyed broke down in that moment the power of prayer went into darkness from that moment and on people are trying once in a while you see some wonders you see some sparks Beams of light are coming through the darkness and giving you some hope, some, some lifeline for another, charging your battery for another couple of hours, but that's it. After it, you keep on praying, keep on praying, and again, you're not being answered. And again, you don't see salvations. And again, something wrong is happening and you lose your stability. And it's happening all the time to everyone. So first of all, you cannot blame yourself that you are poor if you don't make enough money. You don't need to blame yourself if you're sick because you're not the one that can make yourself healthy. You cannot blame yourself on your height because you haven't created yourself. And you cannot have thoughts, even negative thoughts, on your family that you're born in and the community that you're part of. All those things that have been set for you are things that you don't need even to discuss. 
You must understand that this is reality and there is something beautiful in that reality. Now, in that reality, we need to build ourselves. We need to understand what in the world is going on here in this world. Because this world is closing on us. And sometimes we feel the pressure from all of our surroundings in all aspects of life that can be very, very hard, very, very painful, very, very confusing. And we can find ourselves that we're losing our minds. So we must, first of all, come back to that understanding inside of ourselves. Yes, the Creator, He loves me, and unconditional love, but I don't want to ignore my own feelings. I don't want to walk like blind and to disconnect myself, my awareness, my feelings from what that I choose to do in life. For an example, I don't want to wake up in the morning and to force myself to pray when I totally don't feel like praying. I don't want to have to keep Shabbat if Shabbat doesn't mean anything to me now. It doesn't mean that we need to drop Shacharit drop the prayers or drop the Shabbat or drop Kashrut because we don't feel. But to ignore our feelings will bring us finally to that place. Because you cannot ignore yourself forever. One day it's going to explode. One day you're going to say enough, it's enough. And you, it, the crack will grow until the vessel will break. And that's it. The water are out and you cannot hold it anymore. One day it will break. You can hold on only certain amount of time, but not for good, not forever. So for that, we need to deal with our emotions and not to put Shabbat aside or to put Shacharit or Mincha or whatever we took on ourselves or whatever we want to or we feel obligated to keep, to put it aside. Not at all. Just to deal with our issues in a healthy way, in a responsible way. That if you found yourself that something that you're doing is too heavy for you, have a conversation with yourself on that thing. If you found yourself that you're praying to the Creator and you're not being answered, you need to take that problem and to uplift it to a place of honor, to a place of respect, that you will not disrespect yourself and your prayers, Stop judging yourself and criticizing yourself for sure you're not praying well enough, you're not doing it correctly, you're evil, you're awful, you're horrible, you're whatever. Drop all the nonsense, all the filthy language, all the Lashon Ara, all the criticism aside because it's foreign and it's wrong and it's not right. And connect yourself to the truth. Connect yourself to reality. Yes, you are trying to pray. Yes, you are trying to pray in the morning. Yes, you are trying to deal with your problems. Yes, you are putting your mind and trying to focus on doing the right thing. Stop criticizing yourself and judging yourself in a negative way. First of all, because it's not the truth. It's not right. It's not the truth. It's not real reality. It's not the reality. It's not the truth. You are not an evil person. You are not a bad person. You're not an awful person. You're not hopeless. You're not w worthless. You're not lousy. You're none of those things. You have your patterns of being judgmental about yourself and criticize yourself and being rude against yourself and being violent again against yourself. Yes, but it doesn't make you a bad person. You might have bad habits. You might have foreign thoughts. You might fall very fast to sadness, to anger, to frustration, to despair. Maybe you have issues with your attributes, with the way you react, with the way you think, with the way you interpret your emotions. But it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you evil. It doesn't make you hopeless or worthless. Not at all. You should connect yourself to reality. And in reality, you are a good person that is struggling, that cannot find advice, that doesn't know exactly what to do with his time, that is very limited, with the obligations that are plenty, with the stress, with the dreams, with the goals that you set for yourself five years ago, or 10 years ago, or 40 years ago, things that you forgot about already. 
with those feelings you need to deal and not to give up on them, not to drop them. For me, as a person that started his life in a different place in the world, completely off religion, with no connection to Judaism, in, 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 never received the, the Judaism in our house, in, in our family at all. So as a person that joined the Orthodox community in the world, keep observant community, keeping Shabbat, eating kosher, and I did it out of my goodwill, out of my decision to join you guys and to be part of what it you crazy people are doing. <laughs> Don't know why, but already took that decision. Because of that approach, because of that attitude that I had while taking myself into Judaism and obligating myself to the written obligations, to the obligation that are being said by the rabbis and by the teachers that are guiding us on what we should do under the rules of heaven, because that I took it upon myself to keep, to do, that's why I'm always looking in a very healthy perspective on the obligations and on the mitzvot. I don't let them take me to places that I don't want them to take me, means to places that finally will break my happiness and will destroy my self-esteem and will reject me from being observant, from doing things out of love and with a smile and with a happy heart and a wishing soul. When a person is too obligated, means he's taking too much on himself, he follows opinions of other people that are not sensitive enough to guide him individually, to give you the right guidings for you that will fit to your abilities, to your family condition, to your financial power, to, the, to, the, to your spirit, to your age, to whatever you, you, you go through in your life with your children, with your husband, with your wife, whatever. If that righteous man or that rabbi that is guiding you is not aware to all what you're going through in life, he cannot guide you. He can represent his opinion. He can share with you his, his thoughts. He can tell you what he learned, what he read in that book. But he is not your mentor now to walk hand in hand with you. And like we said in the beginning, if in that place in your life there is no person that can give you that hand and walk baby steps with you toward a better future, so you need to be that person that will walk with yourself baby steps toward a better future. You must be sensitive to yourself and aware to your abilities and to your power, to the level of your happiness and also to your craziness and to your ADD and to the results of the LSD that you took 20 years ago that are still breaking their way in and out well, once in a while. <laughs> must be aware to the scratches that you're ca ta carrying with you, to the scars, to the traumas, to the feelings that you carry inside of yourself, to relationships, to disappointments. A person, can, a person that is very sensitive to disappointments. There are people that are more sensitive to disappointment than others. So now for you to go and to pray for a house, a salvation that you must receive because you feel, I need a house. And you are a too sensitive person to disappointments. If you will go and dedicate yourself now to do six hours individual prayer hit bodhidut on a house. And then you'll go and do another six hours hit bodhidut on a house. And then another six hours hit bodhidut. You killed yourself. You killed yourself because you're not going to be answered so fast. Even 18 hours, it takes time. Even if the salvation is yours, I bought a house only with prayers. It's true. We paid also money. But the source that the money came from was an, uh, it, it was an impossible source. It was not by nature. 
We received amounts of money from people that never had those amounts of money to give us. And those are people that we discussed it with them, we were talking with them. We received the money exactly in the day that we had to pay. Only after we were ready to sell our kidneys already, <laughs> <laughs> then Hashem gave the check. So we went through a very hard process and even though that we were so into faith and into prayers, it was a very hard process to be answered. So for a person that is in a very sensitive stage in his life, to push himself to a corner that in that corner, or that I'm being answered, or that I'm falling to my worst disappointment ever, the worst disappointment from the Creator, from Father of Mercy, the one that I was counting on him, I wouldn't suggest you to go to that place at all. I would recommend to pray 10 minutes every day on that issue, a house. I would say pray for other people's houses as well. I would give few more guidings how to build the structure of your emotions, of your heart, that you'll have the tools to be answered and not to crash because of the heaviness of the salvation even. Sometimes when a person wants to... to Every birth is, is, is painful. Every salvation is coming through labor, is coming through difficulties. And not always we have the power to hold on through that process. Sometimes this is the reason why the Creator takes those salvation away from us and putting them only in a couple of years from now or in more than that even because certain things takes time and that time is required and needed for us to stabilize ourselves that we will have the vessels to contain the bounty if now you're asking from someone to drink you tell him I'm thirsty if you will take a, a barrel of water and just gonna pour it all over you You'll be insulted, but you ask for water, and he felt like he wants to give it to you. I mean, that's not what you ask. You ask the water to come in a respectable way, that you'll have the ability to enjoy those water, that you will have the power to hold the vessel in your hand, that it won't be wet, that it won't water you, that it won't spill on your hand, not on the floor, that whatever you were asking for. So for that, you need to have a vessel. If you're coming with no vessels, with no cup, with no plates, with no bags, and you just go, I need my salvation, I need my salvation, I need my salvation, you don't have the power to take those salvations with you and to enjoy from them. And this is why many times we're finding ourselves in those places in life that we should be sensitive to ourselves. That we should understand that this is now not the time to put too much power. That this is not the time now to kill ourselves over some kind of mitzvah or an obligation that someone recommended on or whatever. We need to be aware and sensitive to our abilities. And it's very, very important because if you're not going to be sensitive enough to yourself in that situation, no one will be there for you to help you. And you must feel yourself. You need to check your ability. Now, the Torah is saying that you must do this and you have to do that. And all of those things are coming together. And when you feel so bad with yourself that for many, many years you were not doing anything. And now you want to fix it all today. Days of Tshuva, the month of Av, Sunnits Elul, and Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur, whatever. I know all those sicknesses. I'm aware to those problems. It's okay. Those are sicknesses of the religious world. Those are sicknesses of the religious world. Because the Creator Himself, He's asking us to be happy. He wants us to be happy. Now we have a problem that we don't feel that happiness is something that we deserve. We don't believe that it can be that someone just wants to see us happy. I asked that question once. If you see your kid eating an ice cream and he's happy with the ice cream and he forgot to say shakol niyabidva on the ice cream but you see him enjoying from this ice cream so much, he's so happy just to see him smiling. Again, I'm reminding this awful thing that happened. He forgot to say Baruch Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam shakol niyabidva He forgot to say that. Now, I'm asking are you as a parent have that ability to enjoy seeing your kid eating ice cream without hearing him saying shakol? If not, you're very sick, I'm not able to help you. 
But if you have the ability to enjoy, still, seeing your child eating and enjoying ice cream, even if he forgot to say bracha. So I'm telling you that you received that blessing from heaven. That Hashem is like you. It's true that it's better to say shakol niyabidvaro before of eating ice cream. But if you forgot to say shakol niyabidvaro, or if you don't know it, or if you never learned it, Hashem still enjoys seeing you enjoying from a summer day, from a sunshine, from the nice view, from wearing nice clothing, without bracha, and enjoying to see you when you're happy, even if you not always remember to praise Him, and to thank Him, and to express your gratitude and your appreciation, and to stand long Shmona and to put filin before you wake up in the morning, and to go to the meal, like, re relax. It's written that the Creator created us in His shape. And it's a known thing that the Creator doesn't have a shape. He doesn't have a body. It cannot be that He's a person with a head and two hands and like clear and spiritual with two legs walking. In no, it's not Hashem. Hashem is endless. endless. Hashem is infinity itself. Hashem is beyond forms and figures and shapes. He's but still He created us in His shape. And what is making us different than the rest of the creations? Only us, only human beings, he created in his shape, Betzalmo, Betzalem. What is that Selem? In what we are different than all the rest of creations, that we have that thing inside of us that is similar to the Creator? We're human. We have our soul inside of us. We have our humanity. We have our good source of will inside of us that lives. So, excuse me for my language, the Creator is also human. He's also nice. He's not a person. He's not a man or a woman. But He's like us in His heart. After Adam and Eve sinned, so it's written on Hashem, that He felt sorrow in His heart. He went in. He felt so sad, he was so broken, he was so disappointed, he didn't know what to do. That moment that people, that he gave them everything he could, and suddenly they backed off, they just walked away from him, and like, for what? What are you doing? You left me behind. And then going and trying to hide from him, and he's walking with them in the garden, and they're hiding from him, and they're like scamming and thinking, what's going on? The Creator Himself disappointed. Now we read it in Megillat Echa, and we read it in Kiyat Torah in Tisha B'Av morning. The Creator Himself, He is telling us, You sinned, you messed up, you disappointed me, you did things that I cannot forgive, I don't know what to do. If you will just walk out from your own, and I'm not saying it I'm in, in no way of criticism, saying it to myself, if we together will walk out from our selfish will, we want to be answered, we want our salvation, the redemption, great, put it aside for a second. Let's walk outside and look what the hell is going out there in the world now. While we're sitting here and learning Torah and talking about how to be better people, there are other people in this world that are destroying every drop of good that left. And scamming and doing horrible things, destroying people, humiliating people, abusing people, raping people, breaking people, killing people, forcing people. Killing animals is not something that even we need to be mentioned. Horrible things are happening on this world every moment, every second. Now I'm asking you, when you see your kids fighting, arguing, breaking each other, throwing things, breaking themselves into parts, scratching, what do you, what do you do? What do you do? You lose your mind. That's what that happens to you. You lose your mind. You don't have anything to do. You try to separate them, they don't listen, they keep on fighting. You try to convince them, you sit there with them for an hour, for two hours, another meeting. You take them, therapy, stalking, conversations, group meetings, <laughs> everything you can do. In the end of the day, only one thing to do. You know, you smoke. 
Like, what else can you do? Alcohol doesn't help you. You must start growing marijuana. That's the only solution you can find. No? Or maybe you have other options. I don't know. In the end of the day, you lose your mind. In the end of the day, you lose your mind. You become to be a case. You, yourself, you cannot handle this situation. Now, why Hashem is causing that to us? Why Hashem is bringing those situations to us over and over that we will lose our mind, that we will run to the mountains, that we will run to the Beit Midrash, that we will run to Uman, to Kivret Sadikim, that we will run to the Book of the... Why Hashem is waking us up all the time to understand what happened to Him now? Why did it happen to Him? Why? He's different than us. He's the Creator. But He's also human, like we said before. He has a soul. He is the soul. He is a loving father. He is emotional with his children. He loves us. When we couldn't care less about him, when we ignore him, he doesn't know what to do. When we are killing each other and hating each other and filling our hands and our mouths on each other, he doesn't know how to separate us. He doesn't know what to do. And then judgments are coming to the world, not because of him, because of his sorrow. Because the angels, in the secret of this creation, how the Creator Himself created the world, He put guards on Himself. That's the way that kingship works. There is a king and he's surrounding in many, many circles of guards that are protecting his honor and fighting for his respect and that he will be appreciated and well known in the world and that no one will forget who the king is. This is part of the system that he created when he first created the world. Now when he, the king himself, is upset and doesn't know what to do with himself and walks back to his room, to that place that it's called Mistarim, to the hidden place, that the verse is saying, Bar Mistarim Tivken Nafshi, that the spirit of the Creator is crying in the hidden places. Mipnegeva, because of the arrogant of people. So the angels become furious. Those ones that are in charge on judgments, they're losing their mind. And then you have wars and plagues and destructions and fire. And you don't know how to turn that fire off. And it's not going to turn off by itself. Only when we will wake up the mercy of our Father that is so hurt from us, in that moment... He will come down and blessing will heal the world and there will be no more judgments anymore. And it will finish and it will be an end to all wars, to all judgments, to death, to all plagues, to all sicknesses and weaknesses. Darkness will disappear from the world. What should we do? There is only one thing that we can do. And it's to reconnect ourselves to our parent, to our Father in Heaven. An honest conversation with Him is higher than any other thing that we received from Heaven. It's stronger and more powerful than to wake up before of dawn. It's stronger and more powerful than to keep three days of Shabbat from Thursday till I don't know when. <laughs> it's stronger. It's much stronger. And if you will check and see what the real righteous people did all their lives in times of difficulty, you will see that they went to a quiet place and opened their hearts and spoke with their Father in Heaven. Lea did it. Rachel did it. Esther the Queen, she did it. Ruta Moavia, she did it. Naomi, she did it. Abraham did it. Isaac did it. Jacob did it. Mordechai Yudi, he did it. King David, he did it. Yosef the righteous man, he did it. Everyone, that's what they were doing. Moses, he did it. Aaron, he did it. Miriam, that's what she did. All of them, they went and did tshuva. They went and spoke to Hashem. They regret on their mistake. And they opened their mouths in prayers, simple prayers. They were saying the truth to the Creator. They were asking for Him to come to their houses, to save their, themselves, their problems, to fix their problems, to come down and to help them with that person, to help them with that issue, to fix the, that problem that, that start to develop here in this place. And every single prayer like that is bringing their redemption to this world. 
Because when we're being sincere and honest, in that moment, we are changing the nature of the world from this darkness that took place, from that cloud that was covering earth, to a place that honesty and faith and loyalty and honor and respect and grace and kindness are growing from it. And we should be those flowers that are blooming, that are growing, that are rising and expressing the good that is treasured in our own souls by being honest, by being simple. Not by learning Kabbalah and start combinating numeral values of first letters from different verses while transferring the orders of their le <gasps> Smoke drugs. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> it's not healthy for us to lose our minds. We need to walk. What's my problem? But it's not my problem. I'll just share with you my thoughts. What's the problem? That I have sick people watching me online, that their problem is that they're only misinterpreting me. That's what they, they're sitting and dedicated. Every day they're watching my videos and they're just this un misunderstanding me completely. That's the only thing. Like today, oh wow, he's lecturing, you should go do drugs, violate Shabbat. That's the conclusion. And you think I'm laughing, it makes you laugh. but. In reality, I have sick, sick people that are watching my videos. You wouldn't believe how wrong they are. But it's okay. It's their issue. It's not mine, right? I just need to go and grow my marijuana quietly. No. <laughs> Thank God I'm not smoking and I'm also not lying. And everything is good. We're just laughing to, to release our mind a little bit from trying to be too serious. Life holds a huge potential inside of them. And that huge potential is that we will be who we are. If you want all the time to be different, to change yourself, to make changes in your life, you've been caught in that net of the evil inclination and he's making fun of you. The joke is on you. Because there is only one thing that is impossible for a person to be, to do in this lifetime, and it's to be someone else. With your abilities, you can do whatever you want. All the options are open, but only if you are you. When you are you, you can do whatever. You want to go windsurfing, go windsurfing. No, but I'm tired. You're going to make it. It's going to be okay. You're not going to be a, 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 the first one. You won't be the best. You can do it. If that's what you want, you want to learn Torah. You can learn Torah. People are telling me, I want to serve Hashem. Serve Hashem? What does it mean for you to serve Hashem? I want to learn Torah. Learn Torah? What's the problem? What's the problem to learn Torah? You should buy some book and start learning. Whatever in the language that you know, oh, I want to learn Hebrew. Okay, sit, learn Hebrew. It's going to take you seven years, ten years. So what? If that's what you want, sit and learn Hebrew. What do you want? What's the problem? I want to make Aliyah. Make Aliyah. You can do it. No, I don't have money. Okay, so make money. If that's the path, if that's the way, if that's your decision, that's your goal, 20 years, 30 years, who cares? Die on the way to the Holy Land. If that's your goal, if that's your desire, if that's your dream, die for your dream. What's the problem? Like me, I'm dying every day for my goal, for my dream. I dream to bring redemption. That's my dream. I won't be happy in no other salvation. Whatever you'll give me, I won't. I know myself. I won't be happy. Give me billion dollars. I'm going to invest it all in the Muna project that everyone will know. My wife, she wants to hang herself from the ceiling. She doesn't know what to do. <laughs> She's crazy. Every penny we're receiving, Emuna Project, Emuna Project, Emuna Project. Nothing stays in our pocket. Everything is going back. A penny. Okay, yes, we can. Okay, Chaim, you can go with that project. Okay, Shay, you can go with that project. Okay, Eliezer, yes, you can buy this. Every penny. Every penny is going to pay the expanding of the, this project. Why? Because that's what I want. I don't know what to do else with my life except of doing what that I believe in. I know that Hashem wants me to go and cheer up you guys to understand that you're fantastic, that you're great, that you don't need to change. So 
So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna drive and I'm gonna take all my family into the van and driving for a couple of hours and coming and Shalom Aleichem and how are you doing? Setting the camera. Kids will eat another cookie that is not good for their teeth. Because I know. Healthy cookies, great. Thank you for the cookies. Appreciate. Space cookies, I hope. El Shem is with us. And we are connected to our reality, to our dream. Now, if you have a dream, so go for that dream. But you're too scared. Why? You don't believe in yourself. Why? Because you're disconnected from reality. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You fell into that negative place of criticism, of negative thoughts. You are so used to the criticism that you heard for many years from your parent, from your teachers, from your surroundings, from your husband, from whoever. Everyone are talking. And you took it, took it, took it, took it, took it, soaked it all completely into your guts. And now, instead of fighting against that negative pressure on you, you just became to be the, 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 the sponge, full of the, all of the negativity, full of the sorrow. You lost your mind and you forgot who you are. You forgot who the Creator made you to be. But in reality, you are a gorgeous person. You're a wonderful person. Look at yourself. You don't need to believe me even. Aren't you honest? Don't you want it to be good? Don't you want people to be happy? Don't you dream on a better future? Don't you, wouldn't you do whatever you could to help other people, to save lives of people? Wouldn't you buy houses to, to poor guys that are homeless, that don't have houses? Wouldn't you pay tuition for hundreds of people that cannot afford the best schools for their children? Wouldn't you buy a better car for that person that drives a, this rack? Wouldn't you do good things if you would have the power? You would. So if you are that person and now you hate yourself, I cannot understand why. I'm sorry. I, I don't get it. You must love yourself. Okay, you are limited. Okay, you go through your own hell. You go through your own constrictions. You have your difficulties. You go through your own struggles in life. I understand it. But it's not you. Who are you? When you ask yourself who you are, in that moment you'll find that you are a pearl, that you are a diamond, that you're a precious soul in the eyes of the Creator. And then in that moment, you'll find the ability to express your honest wishes, dreams, and prayers. And those are the prayers that are rising up to heaven and opening the sky for the Creator to reveal Himself to us again. Because when we are not connected to who we are and we're making up stories and we're faking and we're pretending to be someone we're not also our prayers are not honest prayers we're praying for things that are not the real things that are stuck and carved in our hearts and you can pray a shame I want to be pure I want to be holy I want to be an angel I want to be righteous and you don't know what you're asking for you don't have a clue Hashem I want to make Aliyah do you know what it means to live in Israel That's before you pray I lived there for 39 years of my life I, I can tell you about Israel if you want in reality you think that it will be so easy it's not so easy it's very complex I met a woman one year ago, she told me, we failed Aliyah three times, I don't know what to do with my life. I told her, you should start living. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't do Aliyah, relax. No. She set that goal and she wants to make Aliyah. Great. If you are connected to reality and you know that this is the purpose of your life and you have the ability and the power even to live life of poverty, even to struggle, you have that ability. You're not falling to sadness, to depression, to black bitterness and you're losing your mind over there. So go for it. But if you're not, if it's killing you, if it's destroying your relationship with your husband, if it's destroying your kids and all the education that you invested in for years is going to break to pieces, what's the big, big, big wisdom? What, what do you think to yourself? How, why, why to do that? Because someone is drilling Aliyah, 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 Aliyah in your mind, so he can go and make Aliyah. Bless him, pray for him that he will succeed. And you, check yourself. 
If you're in that stage in your life, if you have that ability, if it's really something that you feel that is coming from within, you feel that the Creator is inviting you and calling you and challenging you and telling you that you need, okay, so that's a nice story, go for it and you'll succeed. Because now you have the vessel to be answered, you have the vessel to pray and to fight and to argue and to succeed and to make it. It takes three months to have to that zehut in Israel, even if you are a citizen. <laughs> well, uh, you can't. You go to Misrada Pnim in, in Israel. You ask for for for, for to that zehut. They tell you, we don't speak English. <laughs> now what you gonna do? Don't speak English. You wanna you wanna have a, 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 a your car license. You wanna you wanna you wanna pay. You wanna give the money. Take my money. No, we don't speak English. What you gonna do now? You don't know what to do. In reality, you are not ready. They are not ready. Someone is not ready. You need to be connected to reality. In reality, you need to be happy. If you believe that there is a creator to the world, you need to be with him and the result is supposed to be gorgeous, beautiful. If something is wrong, so fix it. Don't blame yourself on it. And you know why, why you, you blame yourself? Because you're afraid to blame him. But the truth is that you just need to negotiate. You just need to have a conversation. <coughs> You're afraid to attack him. You're afraid to blame him. You're afraid to express all of your sorrow and how much you are disappointed from him. So you blame yourself. And you're swallowing and swallowing and swallowing and swallowing. But in the end, it will break. One of the two is going to break. Or you or him. It's not the right way. You should create a healthy relationship with the one that you believe in. This is something that we should learn from people. Even from people from different religions. Even from people from different cultures. The Creator is someone that loves you. And you should love Him. He's not someone that is terrifying you and you should be scared of Him. Because if on that, on fear, relationship will be built, Take your vacation. It's not good for you. Come stay by our house. We'll protect you. No one will kill you. Everything will be fine. It won't happen. All the judgments and all the fear and all the, 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 the power that people are so afraid of is only because someone was messing with their mind. Only because someone misinterpreted verses to them. Only because someone bent the way they were naturally thinking. Because someone told them wrong things, someone told them horrible things, or about themselves. If you're not going to do this, you're going to be punished. If you're not going to do this, oh, you see what happened to you? It's because you couldn't keep Shabbat, because you were not eating kosher, because you were not guarding your eyes, you're not covering your head, you were not doing this, you were not doing that. All those blamings built a certain pattern in your mind that is twisting reality for you. And now when you are off reality, you're not holding the truth, you're not connected to reality, simple truth, not divine truth, simple truth, reality. You're disconnected if you hate yourself, if you think that you're so wrong, if you think that something is wrong, you are disconnected from reality and it's time to reconnect yourself to reality. In reality, you should meet yourself and confront your fears and ask yourself, what are you doing with your life? And then start doing things out of happiness, out of joy, out of understanding that this is what you want to do with your life. Not because you must, and not because you have to, and not because you need to. You don't need to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Don't you want to do? We're afraid to ask those questions. But I'm not afraid. Why I'm not afraid? Because I realize that I do want to. So if I want to, so I'm gonna. As much as I can. And if I can do more, I'll do more. But if I'm not able, I have five kids and a wife. And I have many obligations. You think I can sit and learn every day like I wish? Like I desire? You think I can go and pray and daven for hours like I would dream of? No, I'm not able to. If I'm going to sleep so late at night, can I wake up before I've done? No, I'm not a machine. Working on my humanity, trying to be human, barely holding on. 
Now, with all those difficulties, with all the obligations, and with my heart coming out to every person that in the street that needs help, how much can a person carry? How much can he take on himself? A certain amount. So now, if I'm going to blame myself on all the things that I'm not doing in the world, I'm not investing one hour a week to save the dolphins. Really? I'm not. One hour a week. Can't you invest in the green forest, in the green forest? You cannot. One hour a week. Cannot give classes. I'm not going and, and sitting with orphans. I'm not teaching. I'm not, I'm not going and, and, and giving money to homeless people in the street. Many things I'm not doing. Many things. Can I blame myself on not covering the whole world when I'm so tiny? I cannot. I'm a person. And with who I am, who that I am, I'm doing as much as I can. And if I won't be happy with what that I'm doing, I lose even the drop of happiness that can, can revive me. And I'm going to lose my mind. And then, because I'm not learning Torah, I won't be happy that I'm married. And because that I'm not praying enough, so I won't be happy that I'm a father and I have amazing kids. And because that I haven't bought that house in Jerusalem, so I'll be sad and won't be happy that I'm able to cover my expenses and to rent a house and to be happy in, I'll lose that happiness as well. And on and on and on. Why? Only because I'll be crazy. Not to pay attention to the good things that I do hold that are in my hands. And every one of us, we have so much. We have so much. And out of that much that you hold, you need to grow. You need to grow those seeds. Because you want those seeds to bloom. You want your house to be bigger. You want your kids to grow. You want your surroundings to smile more. You want the salvation to come in your home. In your area, you need the light to come and fill your, your rooms. You don't need the light over there and the salvation over there. You need something to hold you, to hug you, to give you warmth and confidence and happiness. So you need to invite the light of the Creator into your life, into your house, into your reality. And the way to do it is to pray on the things that you're really going through in life. It's really to take your life and to open them up in front of Hashem and to talk and to share and to tell Him your heart and not to fulfill your obligation of doing one hour hit but the dut a day. It's nothing. That's not one hour hit but the dut. One hour hit but the dut is to be alone with your Creator and to tell Him your heart. And to have one minute of an honest conversation with your God is higher than to spend 12 hours disconnected from Him, with Him, in the eyes of other people, I don't know, doing what. It's nothing. People are sitting in front of an open book for years and they're just getting fatter and fatter and, 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 and taking less showers and stop brushing their teeth <laughs> in a certain age. That's not the will of Hashem. That's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is that we will all be clean and decent and nice and smiling and healthy and taking care of our health and our, and our neighbors and checking what's going on with them. Okay, so you're going to lose another hour of learning. Okay, so you're not going to make a, a, another dish for Shabbat. How much a person can, can eat in Shabbat? <laughs> How much? My wife, she's making between 12 to 18 kinds of salads for Shabbos. I don't know. And she's saying there's no food. I don't know. It's a problem. I think it's a problem. I'm talking to her. It's not a secret. Every Shabbat, though, I need to speak about it. How crazy can we be? Nothing that we do is satisfying us. Nothing is answering our needs. Why can't we just be happy? Like there is Father in Heaven. Yes, I don't know Him. I don't know His name. I don't know how to serve Him. I don't understand anything. But He's there. I'm happy. Why can't we just be happy? Why can't we just see how many wonders and miracles already took place in our lives? And based on those wonders that happened already, we're going to build the next ones. We're going to grow and move to the next ones. You don't need to be righteous and you don't need to be holy. You don't need to be an angel and you don't need to be divine. You just need to be who 
the Creator already made you to be. Who, if not Him, knows how to create? And He created you in your shape, in His shape. He made you in your height. He gave you your colors. He gave you your life experience. He put you among those ones that are surrounding you. He made sure that every detail inside of who you are, in and out, will be exactly shaped and designed by Him. Nothing went wrong in His creation. He made it perfect. Now, how can you have issues with His creation? Unless you still don't understand how great He is. As long as you're criticizing yourself and not recognizing how great and fantastic and beautiful and powerful and, 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 and with no limitations you are, spiritually we're such powerful tools to achieve and to bring down wonders to the world. As long as we're disconnected from those treasures that are treasured inside of us, we're disconnected from the truth. We still live in the world of lie world of coverings, the world of darkness, because we don't understand the greatness of His creation. Even if you're not able to fly like Michael Jordan, or to dance like Michael Jackson, or to, or to learn Torah like Rabbi Akiva and his friends, why do you think that you're supposed to? Why? Why do you think that your candle is supposed to be lit like the candles of Sarah from Friday till next Friday? Why do you think you should, they should? Why? Why? Why do you think that your prayers should be supposed to be answered like, 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 like Esther Amalka? Why do you think that your decree is supposed to come down to the world like the decrees of Mordechai Yudi? Why? Maybe you have your own story. A Baal Tshuva, a person that is doing Tshuva, that is coming back to Hashem, he's got his way. He doesn't need to walk in a different path. You don't need to be different. You don't need to be me. I don't need to be him. He doesn't need to be her. Everyone's supposed to be himself. Now, in your path, you have your job. You have your mission. You have the purpose of your life. To make sure that those ones that are around you will have what that they need, that, that you inside this circle will bring down light of Hashem to the world, that you will be connected, that you will be happy, that you will feel complete and good about yourself, that you will respect yourself, that you will make sure that your children, that your surroundings are growing in the right way, that you will do good in your world. Not everyone's supposed to walk in the heights, to climb the highest mountains or to be the Lubavet Sherebe or his wife. No. No. You have children, you have a house, you have a mortgage, you have a business, you have problems with your shoes, with your back, with your head. You need to take care of those things and you should do it for Hashem. And you can connect yourself to Hashem on your way to the dentist, like I'm going to do tomorrow at 1 o'clock in Brooklyn. Pray for me, please. <laughs> May Hashem answer all your prayers, all requests. Amen. Can you answer? Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.